Well, Jerry, uh, really good to see you again. And uh, just for all of us here, this is Jerry Pollock. Uh, we're in your home and um, your uh, University of Washington professor in the School of uh, uh, Bioengineering, I believe. Well, it's the Department of Bioengineering, Department. which is which falls under the jurisdiction of engineering and medicine. So, and it, in the space between two disciplines, sometimes great discoveries happen. Right? Sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and you're also the author of two books, uh, Cells, Gels, and the Engines of Life, and then the fourth phase of water, which I think is getting a lot of attention recently. Um, and I think last time we talked, we, you mentioned uh, Gilbert Ling's work on structured water that you kind of built from and developed uh, theories about how water forms a uh, structured, almost liquid crystalline characteristic that has a, a charge to it. Could you explain that a little bit more? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Gilbert Ling uh, was a huge influence uh, on me. Unfortunately, he passed it. Uh, two or three years ago, he uh, he reached the age of uh, almost one hundred. Wow. He came he came very close, and and Gilbert uh, Gilbert spent most of his lifetime dealing with biological water, water in the cell, uh, and he had the idea that uh, not just the idea, but uh, the idea plus evidence that the water inside the cell was structured, was organized in some way. Uh, kind of like soldiers at a, at attention, and and his idea came from from uh, the fact that a water molecule you can think of the water molecule as a, a dipole that is like a beam with a plus at one end, minus at the other end, and you can imagine how with the pluses and minuses that the molecules could stack on one another, and that was his central idea, and there was a lot of evidence to support it. And that's what inspired me, anyway, to get involved. We had been studying the uh, molecular mechanism of muscle contraction mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of decades. And suddenly I, I felt the urge, the need to change because this was so important. Um, and we started doing experiments. Well, before we did experiments, I actually put together a book and that you had mentioned the book, uh, Cells, Gels, mm -hmm. and the Engines of Life. And the book was intended to bring forth Gilbert Ling's ideas, which at the time I, I thought were uh, uh, not only critically important, but also pretty much accurate. We mm -hmm. found something a little bit different uh, as soon as we started experiments. But the idea was to, um, to bring forth his, his ideas to the general public because Gilbert Ling, uh, notwithstanding his brilliance, he was not a great writer. Or he might have been a great writer if he took the time to it, but you know, he would sit down at the word processor or before that at the typewriter, mm -hmm. back something out, send it to the publisher, and 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 the word I guess the word editing maybe doesn't exist in the Chinese language. I'm not sure. <laughs> so no editing. And, and uh, you know, having written a bunch of books myself, um, beyond the two that you actually mentioned, there was one on muscle contraction, I, uh, I, I learned that editing was critically important. And the way I learned it was, was um, I, I'd write something and I, I, I thought it was perfectly clear. And then I'd look at it a week later and I couldn't understand <laughs> what the <laughs> points were that I was writing. So I, I quickly learned that Editing was was really critical. So well, I I wrote I, I read some of Gilbert Lang's work. Oh, and did, you're right. I mean his papers uh, are they're a slog. A uh, slog. And when I read your material, it was really I mean maybe I had read it in eighth grade level or something, but I thought it was much more clearly expressed. Much. Well, thank you. I write at an eighth grade level. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's why we're friends. <laughs> yeah, so that was... Well, Gilbert actually... Gilbert didn't like the book. Um, he, oh. Well, you know, he, um, he thought that I stole his thunder mm. uh, because the book became popular, or yeah. relatively, not nearly as much as the fourth phase that you, you yeah. mentioned, but it was popular because... You know, I think there's a real, a, a, a real hunger for 
for fresh ideas in, in all of science. We don't find too many fresh ideas. Um, you know, and but I thought your contribution was that this this biological water actually had a charge. Well, yeah. So that came afterward. So uh -huh. so uh, we we began after the book was published. I I felt a huge compulsion to start doing experiments, mm. and so we began experiments, and um, and we we found we we were able to confirm that indeed there was. Uh, such a thing as structured water, that's what Gilbert mm -hmm. Link had called mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, we found that we, we, we immersed uh, in, in, into a suspension of particles, uh, we used microspheres, we immersed a, a gel, an ordinary gel, something like, like um, gelatin dessert, mm -hmm. uh, but not mm -hmm. that, uh, a chunk of it in, into the chamber that contained the water with particles. And we noticed quickly that right next to the surface of that gel, there was a region that excluded all of those particles. Mm -hmm. um, and so we called it the exclusion zone because it excluded. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a, maybe a poor choice. It's easy to remember, mm -hmm. exclusion mm -hmm. zone. It, 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 that's an advantage. On the other hand, um, because we found that it had so many interesting properties, uh, uh, we began calling it fourth phase, mm -hmm. phase mm -hmm. of water, because mm -hmm. its properties were different from liquid uh, water or solid water. And it consisted that it was somewhere in between the liquid and, uh, and the solid, kind of like raw egg white. Uh, so one of the experiments we, we did is uh, we, we were curious to see what happens if we stuck an electrode in, in that zone. And I, we fully expected that it was going to be neutral. Mm. Um, Water is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we had no reason to think otherwise. And we stuck these microelectrodes, invented uh, parenthetically by the same Gilbert Ling, mm. uh, and they tapered down to a tip um, about one micrometer. Mm. And so, you know, some, if, it's been it's been used by many people to measure the electrical potential of cells. Right. Um, and that was a revolution that Gilbert Ling brought by inventing that kind of electrode. And he should have won a Nobel Prize at least for that, if not uh, for other reasons. And so, and I had some experience with this. Um, I started mm -hmm. my career measuring electrical potentials in mm -hmm. cells, mm -hmm. maybe because my original education was in electrical engineering, so electricity was was interesting. And we stuck it in, and voila, we measured negative electrical potential, and that's that set us off in a in a direction because, um, you know, if if uh, if you start with water, which is neutral, and you see a big region that has negative electrical charge, there must be another region that has right. positive, right? And, yeah. and and we found it, and and, and uh, so so you've got the uh, EZ or exclusion zone sitting. You have a gel here or some mm -hmm. other material, and next to it you have this exclusion zone that builds that has negative charge, and the region beyond it has positive charge. That's a battery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Batteries contain energy. Yeah, um, and of course. You know, in order to get energy, you can't just create energy from you, you can you can get some kind of energy from another kind of energy. You know, one transforms into another, um, and and so we were curious. It, it's like if you have a battery in your phone, you know, if you don't charge it at night, next morning you don't have a usable phone. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward, and we found that it was actually light, infrared light, infrared light. Yeah. Stimulates this. Well, builds it. Yeah, builds it, it provides it provides the energy for the growth of this uh -huh. water, and and so if you um, infrared energy is all around us, mm -hmm. so there's plenty of it. And if you add more, um, for example, with infrared light um, mm -hmm. of some mm -hmm. sort, then the exclusion zone or fourth phase grows, and we've seen growth up to ten times. It's very sensitive to infrared. You just need a small amount of infrared to build, to charge this battery. You know, I'd like to explore that more, uh, 
later in the conversation, but it seems to me that the human body at the cellular level, because it has this biological water, that has to be very fundamental to, I guess, our chemistry, our, just the very fact of life well, at the cellular level. It, it couldn't be more fundamental. We're, we're talking about um, you know, this, this kind of water fills your cells. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and if you've got um, charged uh, kind of water that fills your cells, imagine your cell, cells are negatively charged. Um, and and, and um, um, this kind of water is negatively charged. And if you, if you think about it, uh, if, you take, if you take a cell and you fill it with something that's negatively charged, of course, you stick an electrode and you'll measure negative electrical potential, mm -hmm. um, right? Which is, you know, what, what you measure. Now, these negative charges, uh, all they, they repel. So all they want to do is right. get away from one another, mm -hmm. right? And that tendency to disperse amounts to potential energy. So the cell, uh -huh. by, by, by virtue of having this negatively charged uh, water uh, inside the cell, contains potential energy. And, you know, nature, nature exploits this kind of energy. It doesn't just throw it away. Mm -hmm. and so, so it's really, really critically important. The fact that cells are filled with this kind of water and uh, that water leads to uh, negative electrical potential. That potential is really potential energy. Uh, and, and we found we found uses uh, for this in biology, mm -hmm. um, and I, uh, I can go into that if you like, but this will distract us, I think, from the direction that... Uh, that well, in biology, I mean, one of the things, we all age. We're not going to get away from that. Yeah. Uh, but it seems as though this may have implications, though, in the aging process. Do you have any thoughts or observations about that? Uh, well, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Um, I have thoughts about a lot of things. It doesn't necessarily mean they're true or, or whatever. All right. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, as I said, this this water builds next to um, uh, hydrophilic surfaces. Uh, we we know we know that. And inside the cell, there are lots of solids. There are you know proteins, nucleic acids, and and their surfaces are mostly hydro hydrophilic. And, and so this water builds easily. As we age, you know, those, uh, those proteins uh, may undergo um, uh, some kind of, uh, of change. There are mutations that occur with, with mm -hmm. aging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of those surfaces may be less able or even unable uh, to build this kind of easy water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have less easy water inside the cell. Now, easy water, I would maintain this is critical for function. Uh, as we get older, if we if we have more and more of these mutations, um, uh, we may have as a as a consequence may have less um, of easy water inside mm -hmm. the cell. Mm -hmm. And you need uh, in order for function to occur for full function, the cell needs to be filled with easy water. If if it's missing easy water, it impairs function. Um, uh, I, I can give some examples of, yeah. of that, uh, if you like, but I, I don't want to get off. Well, no, that, makes, that makes good sense, because one of the examples I suspect would be muscles. Would probably yeah. Well, no, I, yes, one of them would be muscles, but, but I, I have a different one uh, mm -hmm. that, I'm, that I'm thinking of, and, and that is cancer. Mm. Um, so, um, uh, you know, um, well, I have to back up a step to sure. to, to explain. So, um, most scientists uh, think that the reason the cell has a negative electrical potential is because of uh, membrane pumps and channels. Oh, mm. um, and I've I've written fairly extensively on on, on that subject and. And there's evidence and there's logic that leads to um, the view that that's not correct. And I understand that almost every uh, biological scientist or medical scientist thinks it is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'll just give give one example. You know, the cell, the cell is uh, it contains a, a membrane and a cytoplasm, which is a gel-like 
Mm-hmm. Um, now, um, um, if you were to remove the membrane, you just have the gel-like cytoplasm. If you stick electrodes into a gel, no, no membrane, <laughs> um, just just the cytoplasm-like gel, you you can measure electrical potential just the same as you do in an intact cell. So mm-hmm. you don't need the membrane, you don't need the pumps and channels. You get the same result if you just stick it into a gel, mm-hmm. stick your. Mm-hmm. And so it's hard to argue from that. Um, I mean, the logical argument, if you were coming from Mars and someone asked you, well, where does the electrical potential come from? You know, you naively say, well, it comes from the gel. Uh, it comes from the cytoplasm, not from the membrane, because, right. because you get the same result with no membrane. That's just one of a half dozen uh, different Typically, I would guess, is that structures really aren't just established for no reason. Uh, If something functions uh, and there's a structure associated with it, then it would be useful. But if there's a structure and it has no particular use, in a biological system, it doesn't really make sense for it to actually be there. In other words, maybe the membrane doesn't really exist. Is that what you're saying? I didn't say it doesn't exist, although there are some people who argue that it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if it exists or not. I mean, um, uh, I, I guess I, I wouldn't take the position that it doesn't exist unless mm-hmm. I was absolutely convinced of it. All right. Uh, but enough. there is, as I said, there are suggestions that it might not exist. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, it need, need, needs to be lo- looked into further. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> you asked the me the existence questions. of the channels. Yeah, now that you're you are willing to question though. Absolutely. Yes. The channels and the pumps and the, and the, the pumps. membrane. Yeah. So I I wonder that what about what about ordinary cell division, mitosis, what causes right. or what triggers it? And it turns out studies done fifty years ago by a um, scientist named Clarence Cohn, he found that um, in order for the cell um, uh, to divide, the electrical potential has to at least transiently go from its normal value to a very low value. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and stay there for, for some time. Yeah, then the yeah, cell yeah. says, oh, okay, it's time to divide. Um, mm-hmm. You need somehow to rebuild the easy water, which is basically cellular hydration. Uh, so I, that's just one, one example now. Um, and the, another thing I guess I, I would mention, this is, again, this is a speculation, you know, uh, considerations. Why, why is it, why is it that we live uh, on average of not ninety years or whatever, you know, plus or minus, uh, depending on matters. Whereas some insects live for one day, mm-hmm. um, and at the other end of the spectrum, some trees can live five thousand years, like baobab trees. Um, they, you know, thousands of years. Why? Why is that? Uh, what's What's the reason? And I've been wondering whether it might have something to do with cosmic radiation. Mm. Uh, I know that sounds way out um, in left field somewhere, but um, I, I I wonder about that because we're bombarded constantly by um, cosmic radiation. Right. Cosmic radiation consists largely of positively charged entities like alpha mm-hmm. particles, mm-hmm. helium mm-hmm. nuclei, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and protons. So we're bombarded by positive charges. Positive charges tend to neutralize um, right. easy water, um, and we need that easy water. And, uh, and also they can tend to also to create mutations. Um, and, and, and so, um, you know, we're, we're exposed to cosmic radiation. And if you take insects, their vital organs are right near the surface mm-hmm. and they're exposed to a, a lot of cosmic radiation. Oh. And if you take baobab trees, they, the roots are buried, right. you know, underneath the earth. So they're, they're protected. And I, I, I looked into um, a, a couple of different species, like there's a species, um, I, I noticed this, um, I was on a safari with my late wife in Africa, and uh, and we noticed these these mounds. Uh, they look like teepees, but they're mm-hmm. mounds of dirt. Uh, 
there's a whole bunch, like a village full of them. I had no idea what they were. Mm -hmm. right? You know, you might know what they were. I asked the guides, and they're termite mounds. Mm -hmm. So the termites live inside the mound, and, and there are three, three kinds, just like bees. Uh, you know, there's the queen, uh, and there's the worker, and there's the soldier. And the workers and soldiers go out pretty much every day, oh. and do it, and the queen remains buried down beneath this big mound of earth. And she has a huge long life expectancy. Actually. Fifty years, roughly, oh, yeah. compared to a couple of months of uh, all the others. Yeah, 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 yeah. Same genetics. They're, they're somehow the queen is selected in a way that's not clear to anybody from the same batch of eggs. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and the same thing, I, I found some species of spiders. Some of the spiders are terrestrial spiders mm. and a very close relative lives in caves. Mm. The one that lives in caves- Much longer. Life. Much longer. Interesting yeah. perspective. You know, you, were, you mentioned hydration too. And I just, as a thought experiment, since almost all of the oxygen that our body uses goes through our mitochondria so it can carry out its functions. And the output of the mitochondria is carbon dioxide and water. Then would it seem to you that the health and vitality of our mitochondria actually may be associated somewhat with the production of easy water? Well, I think so. Um, um, yeah, because the electrical potential inside the mitochondria is like minus 200 millivolts or yeah, something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And all those membranes that uh, exist inside the mitochondria are just the kinds of membranes that you think would facilitate the buildup of surfaces, hydrophilic surfaces, the buildup of easy water. There you go. So yes. Uh, yeah. Now the way the way it works, though, I think it, 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 it's not that the easy water comes out of the mitochondria no. into the rest of the cell. I think sure. it's the negative charge that does it. See. If you take, we, we have experiments that show that if you take ordinary water and you pass negative charge into the water, right. you don't need uh, any kind of a hydrophilic surface. That ordinary liquid water in the presence of electrons coming in turns into easy water. Interesting. So, Interesting. so I think that's what the mitochondria do. The mitochondria provide negative yeah. charge. Interesting. Uh, and, um, yeah, so essentially uh, same same result, but but I think that could be the mechanism. Yeah, thank you for that. And you know, you, you worked for a long time in muscle in the muscle area. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts or observations about uh, easy water and the link between you know the structured water and the ability of muscles to do work? Yeah. Or... Um, yeah. Um, I'm just thinking of the best way to to uh, present that. Well, the first of all, you know, muscles are uh, two thirds water, like oh, essentially yeah, all the yeah, other, yeah. you know, and and if you do a, a molecular count, if you if you line up all all the molecules inside the muscle and count one by one, you know, it it turns out that more than ninety nine percent of the molecules in the muscle are water are molecules. Water. It, so it, it, it borders on arrogant to say that, oh, water doesn't do anything. You know, like 99 out of 100 molecules don't do anything. <laughs> you know, there you go, but, yeah. So if, if they're doing nothing, then what in the world are they doing there? Yeah. What are they doing? And, <laughs> and interestingly, the theories of muscle contraction are the one, the one that predominates. It came from uh, the late uh, Sir Andrew Huxley. And he was... You know, he was a famous scientist. Uh, he was a Nobelist among uh, Nobelists. And uh, he'd walk into the room and, and there would be a hush. It's like God has just walked into the room. Yeah. So anything coming from his mouth is taken seriously by virtually everybody. And, and his theory prevails to this day, um, despite mounds of evidence that, don't, that simply don't fit the theory at all. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, not so many people know about that, but in another book that I wrote, I detailed all the evidence that uh, up to the year 1990, that, that doesn't fit. And mounds of evidence simply don't, don't, don't fit. And one of the things is that in his model, there's no water. Uh, it's oh. the proteins of uh, muscle are, are acting in a vacuum. Yeah. <laughs> you know, 
water is not there, but if water is there, then you have to take into account the water that is, is there. Well, we found that the water, at least in the relaxed muscle, is structured, is easy water. Mm -hmm. In the contracting muscle, it's not. The water changes in, into ordinary water, and then it returns, ordinary liquid water, and it returns um, uh, back to easy water when the muscle stops contracting. So there, there is water in, uh, there, and, and the water is important. And um, I can't describe in, in, in great detail the evidence for this, but one of the things we found in multiple types of experiment is that when the muscle contracts, it doesn't contract smoothly like this. It contracts in little jerks and steps. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I've argued that, um, uh, that the water is playing an integral role in it, that, that um, the water transitions from easy water to liquid water, gives you a step of contraction, then it stops, and then a, a new region in the muscle structure of water undergoes that transition, and you get another step, and then it stops. Mm -hmm. It stops, and it keeps doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I think... <laughs> To, to answer your question without diagrams and such, it's it's a bit uh, challenging, but water is present in muscle. Water plays an integral role in the contraction of the muscle. And, and you have, a, a, I'm assuming then, that the return of a, the easy water to the muscle in the relaxed state, the period of time from relaxed to contraction to relaxed again, may be dependent on a number of factors that speed or slow the regeneration of easy water. Would you say that? For example, do you think muscles might recover faster if you had uh, infrared um, treatment? Sure, sure, absolutely. That's a good point. I I not uh, I thought about that, but isn't it true that um, uh, certain cl clinicians will apply heat. Uh, True, that's right. Yeah, that's exactly what you do, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you know, the heat is essentially the same as infra infrared. infrared. Yeah. And so, yeah, um, um, huh. yeah, and and muscles. You know, if you're if you're an athlete, you know that um, if you overdo it, your muscles will be contracted, and it's hard to yeah. hard to relax them. Mm -hmm. And in order to relax them. You need to build easy rebuild easy water, um, and that's the hard, it's the energy requiring uh, part of the cycle. You see, and so you don't have the energy if you're depleted in some way. Um, hard to hard to rebuild, hard to return it to easy water, and therefore your muscles remain contracted. Yeah, thank you very much. That I mean, uh, that was very enlightening to me, Jerry, and and in part because of uh, triathletes that I've seen, you know, they jump out of the water, jump onto their bike, and then they get a muscle cramp. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They've used up all their energy to get to that one point, and now they're ready to go again, but they haven't yet quite recovered. Ah, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, okay. Uh, and, and sometimes, or there may be methods to encourage that recovery. Maybe it's heat. The, the well, I think heat would would actually have, yeah, uh, help. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and I would also imagine that a, uh, a a negative charge in some way, whether it's food or other thing, may, may also help too. Yeah, you know, negative charge is, is, is interesting. Yeah, from from food, but there there was a, a researcher, a guy you might not be aware of, and his name is Nordenstrom, mm -hmm. uh, and. Um, and Nordenstrom was a Swedish scientist, and he was also uh, like president of the Nobel Committee. Uh -huh. uh, so this is a scientist of some distinction, but he was controversial. He took cancer cells, and he'd stick an electrode, um, uh, one electrode right in the middle of the mass of the tumor, mm -hmm. and the other electrode somewhere r remote, and he'd pass electrons or basically electrical current into right. the tumor and the tumors and the cancer recovered. And Interesting. 
you know, no, no, nobody believed him. And he, he was, in a way, he was an oddball because he, he never published exactly his methodology, and so so oh, so he tended to, well, yeah. So he tended to be dismissed, but but you know it makes a lot of sense to me because um, I, because if you pass electrons, we know that electrons will build easy water, right? And right, if right. easy water is the problem, <laughs> then then um, adding negative charge should tend to reverse it. Yeah. So I think this is an area that uh, it absolutely is in desperate need of follow-up. Yeah. Well, that's very, very interesting to us. And, you know, another area that is interesting to us, because we covered bioelectricity and muscle and cells, Yeah. the brain uses an enormous amount of our energy, uh, even though it's a relatively small part of our body. Do you have any thoughts about easy water, the brain function, and... Uh, um, I guess just the ability to maintain mood or even thought processes. Well, you know, it's not a profound thought. It's just that uh, the brain cells operate like every other cell in the body. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and um, uh, the evidence that we have is, is that those cells, uh, nerve cells, just like muscle cells or secretory cells or any cells, they need easy water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and so if you don't have enough easy water, you're not thinking very well. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and uh, and when you're tired and your thoughts begin to become fuzzy. Um, um, so you know, there there is a part here that we've always been thinking about the brain as neurons. You know, they they have an electromotive, or they have a charge. They create a synapse, and that something happens. Yeah. But it seems as though there's something more subtle going on here, too. That is, the electromotive potential within the cells themselves uh, actually denotes the healthiness of the cells. Sure. And their ability to carry out their basic functions of providing these synapses, these connections. Sure, sure. Uh, cr critically important. Um, so I, I mentioned that in cancer cells, the very low magnitude of the electrical potential right. but it's the same in other cells kidney for example pathological kidney cells same thing minus 10 minus 15 millivolts and i i think um i think it's a generality i i haven't ex expressly studied the electrical potential in other kinds of pathological cells but but i i would predict that it, it's the same thing that a pathology is or many pathologies, at least, are associated with a, a, a dearth of easy water. And in order to reverse the pathologies, basically, you gotta you got to add easy water. In other words, mm -hmm. hydrate mm -hmm. the cell. Hydration, yeah, yeah. quote, unquote, hydration is critical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And the, the fact that we are able to get these is this negative charge that actually seems to improve our ability to, to maintain a quality structured water within ourselves ourselves is uh, is really part of the message and that other ways to get this negative charge whether it's sunlight in the northwest we've got a nice day today so we well yeah sun. we do have some cloud breaks <laughs> <laughs> and and i and you mentioned uh, uh electrical uh, potential i think maybe even alkaline uh, uh food sources uh, would be useful um, do you have other thoughts or other ways to stimulate the, the potential yeah, well, uh, of creating easy water at the cellular? Another way um, is the sauna, or as the Finns oh, say, the yeah. sauna, <laughs> uh, and as the Russians say, the banya. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so what is that? Well, <laughs> it's a, essentially a, you're flooding yourself with infrared energy because... Because uh, uh, whether whether it's dry or moist, it, it's heat. It's very hot, right. mm -hmm. and the hot and, and the heat means it, it's an overwhelming amount of infrared energy. And so, you know, if you go into a sauna and uh, feeling having a headache and not thinking clearly and muscle aches and whatever, you come out 20, 30 minutes later, you're feeling like a million bucks. Mm -hmm. You know and and I think the reason is very simple that 
it, that infrared energy is penetrating uh, from outside to inside your body to everywhere to all organs and yeah. any organ that was deficient in easy water the infrared energy would build easy water so you feel better yeah now yeah. Do, you, do you think there's any connection with the notion that um walking on the beach you know grounding that sort of notion that that is also maybe a potential uh electromotive charge that would be absolutely Absolutely, and the reason, the reason uh, is that the Earth itself is negatively charged. Mm. Um, now, when when I first heard that, um, you could have knocked me over with a feather. I, <laughs> you know, I I did my undergraduate work in electrical engineering, mm -hmm. and I spent four years, and no professor ever even hinted about when, when you plug the plug into the receptacle, you know, that third prong. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, everybody knew that it goes into neutrality, into neutral. But it turns right. out that it's not the case. And, you know, uh, uh, it was, I first learned that from, from a Russian guy who was visiting my lab and he was talking about the Earth's electric field. Mm -hmm. I said, Andre, Electric field? You mean magnetic field, right? Everybody's heard of the magnetic field of the Earth, but apparently I thought nobody's ever heard of the electric field. You say, oh yeah, you know, the Earth is negative, and up in the ionosphere it's positive, and it's like a capacitor. Uh -huh. uh, and between the positive plate and the negative plate, you have an electric field with the electric field lines going, going like that. And, <laughs> You know, a new concept. <laughs> I, I was absolutely taken aback. I couldn't believe, you know, and I said, I never heard of it. He said, well, it must be something, something to do with the uh, American educational system. Uh, he said in Russia, in Russia, every middle school student knows that the earth is negatively charged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he was, he was critical of the American educational system for maybe for, <laughs> for good reason. And I confirmed with some Russians who are of contemporary age, yeah, that they learned in middle school that the earth was negatively charged. So I, I, I went home that evening, uh, remember, I, I confused. The next morning, one of my students came in and brought me the lectures of uh, Richard Feynman, you know, the oh, great yeah. physicist. Mm -hmm. And he had dog-eared the page, um, opening to volume two, chapter nine. And it was, the whole chapter was on the earth's, uh, the Earth's electrical net electric ne negative electrical Interesting. charge. Now Feynman was part of the Manhattan Project, and he was—I mean—he had illustrious. A lot of people consider him to be, uh, you know, the Einstein of the second half of the yeah. uh, last yeah. century. It was yeah. also funny. If you, <laughs> well, the, if you haven't read the book, well, the, if you haven't read the book, uh, it's called "Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman." <laughs> okay, uh, and. Uh, and he was telling me about, about his exploits during the Manhattan Project. So one of his exploits, you know, this was a high security place. And one of the exploits was uh, uh, that he would creep under the fence and exit. Uh -huh. And then he would come in the usual uh, route. And, uh, you know, he'd say, I, I, I want to enter. And, 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 and the guard would say, well, it's impossible because you haven't left. <laughs> 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 a joke that physicists would really chuckle about. <laughs> well, yeah, and, 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 and he, he was also a notable safe cracker. And oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. He played the bongo drums and, um, well, he was, he was a character. Uh, uh, I'm going to have to look at that book. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Surely you're joking, Mr. Feynman. It's an absolute must read. It's a, it's a little easier than his book on quantum electrodynamics. Um, I, 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 I tell you, uh, you know, one of my students who, who was actually a physics student said, you, you got to read Feynman's book on quantum electrodynamics because it's relevant to the stuff that you're thinking about. You know, and I, I said, I was a little reluctant because I figured that it's going to be complicated. Uh, and, and finally, he convinced me it's a thin book. You know, mm -hmm. it's called QED, quantum electrodynamics. Uh -huh. And I open the book and, and I read the foreword of the book, uh, written, written by some guy who I presume is his colleague or friend or whatever. And he said, you should read this book 
okay, but you won't understand it. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I said, well, wait a second. Is this guy a friend of Feynman or an enemy of Feynman? <laughs> Uh, you know, who who would want to bother reading reading book? The can of Yeah, he said, you won't understand it, but it's very important. You should read it. So then after this foreword comes the preface by Feynman himself. And I figured Feynman's going to rescue me from this. And he said, you won't understand this. And the reason I can certify that you won't understand it is because my students don't understand it. And even I don't understand it. And I invented it. <laughs> So I, I did manage to read through. Uh, and surely you're joking, Mr. Feynman, revisits us. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's really um, challenging. Okay, I'm sorry. That's very, very interesting, very entertaining. I appreciate it, uh, Jerry. But I, I did want to get back to something else. Yeah. Uh, we talked about ways to improve your negative charge, if you would, or your oh, easy yeah. water. I suspect there's a lot of things in life that deplete our easy water. Yeah. Do you, do you have any observations about that? Well, I, yeah, I think I, uh, for, uh, I, I, I do, but, but I didn't complete the, oh, complete well, the story. Uh, yeah. yeah, because I was deviating into uh, Feynman and his stuff. But if you connect yourself electrically to the earth, you're right. connecting yourself electrically to a source of practically infinite negative charge. Right. Negative charge seeps into your body, builds easy water, you feel good. Yeah, I, I, we are finding a lot of benefit to that. And I'm, just this weekend, I was on the beach in California, enjoying my feet, you know, in the sand. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, if you're aware of it, you 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 actually can feel good. Yeah. Recognize that there's a goodness to the feeling. It's not like a caffeine high or that kind of business. It's just it's a flowing good feeling. I understand you had a similar experience when you were quite young. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, yeah, I got buried in the sand, right near the water, there you go. moist sand. And boy, I, 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 I remember so little from the time that I was a child, but I remember this distinctly because, because my friends who buried me said, "Well, it's time to go. The tide's coming in, <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's time to go you. home." And I just didn't want to get unburied. I was buried. Mm -hmm. up to my neck mm -hmm. it felt so good so good uh that it stood out from every other feeling that i had yeah, that's yeah. why I, yeah. I remember it so yeah you're basically wet sand good conductor right right, the, right right yeah you're connecting yourself to, the same thing if you if you bathe in the ocean also mm -hmm. good conductor mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh the same thing if you if you immerse yourself in mud baths yeah. As in yeah. Japan. And, and so. waterfalls would similarly be the same sort of way to feel a connector. Well, yeah, I think it's a little bit different. And, but, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, the waterfall, I think you're, you're exposing yourself to, to moist air, to water droplets that are right. scattered. And these water droplets have net negative charge. Okay. Sure. So, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another way, by the way, I, I know your question um, was have a positive charge, but but uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy is is actually another another. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I well, yeah. I mean, that's not as accessible as some of the other, but uh, but we found, you know, hyperbaric means high high oxygen, high pressure. Right. We studied high oxygen, um, and we studied high pressure, and what each of them do to easy water, and they both build easy water. Interesting. So. I think if you immerse yourself into a hyperbaric oxygen chamber, which, you know, is not maybe so easy to do, but if yeah. you, you have access to one, uh, it, it builds easy water in your body. And that's why, that's why it's powerfully effective for so many different syndromes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that makes great sense to me. Well, it, it, I think it make, makes sense. Uh, okay. Then. So you're talking now about positive charge. Yeah, I mean, uh, what damages easy water is part of our Well, oh, okay, so I've been noticing yeah. in the last week or so <laughs> when the clouds are beginning to descend. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you see gray clouds. The clouds are negatively charged. Um, and if there's a cloud just above the earth, 
it, it um, induces, you know, by Faraday induction, mm -hmm. the negative cloud induces positive charge on um, the Earth. On the Earth, or just uh, locally, just yeah, beneath yeah, yeah, the cloud. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's been confirmed. People measure oh, the so the Earth is normally negatively charged, but if you're just underneath a gray cloud, mm -hmm. um, it, it's very, you know simple concept, uh, right? You got a negative charge here. And here's the earth. It's going to pull the negative, um, mm -hmm. uh, or pull the positive charge up near the surface, uh, you know, because it attracts the positive charge. Right. It's, it's, it's not complicated. And I've been noticing, uh, uh, that on, on days when, when the clouds come, uh, that my eyes begin to, to start burning and I'm not feeling, feeling quite as energetic, um, uh, as I do when the, when the sun shines, mm -hmm. and which I've been doing for the past three months or so, right, right, right. Endlessly. So, uh, yeah, Seattle, as you know, um, Northwest we enjoy the summers, the summer sunshine. So, so that's that's maybe one example. Interesting. Inducing yeah. positive charge, yeah. not feeling quite so good, and I think a, a lot of people feel that. And and um, I remember some experiences driving in my car. With the clouds up above, feeling, you know, out of sorts, tired, and suddenly the sun comes through, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. suddenly I feel better. Yeah, I, yeah, you know, and and I think it walking it, on sunshine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so so um, yeah. I think that positive charge is is a problem for us. Yeah. And, uh, well, then presumably foods that are highly acidic or whatever carry a positive charge would you also feel that's a cautionary note well i have no expertise in that but yeah. uh, at least at least theoretically so yeah. you know most food most vegetables and such if you think about it oh right if you you know they've got easy Maybe. water yeah inside that's why you know if you squeeze out the easy water by juicing um you're basically drinking uh, low, uh, high pH, negatively charged water, easy water, yeah, directly into your body, and that's why it seems to be so effective uh, in in reversing pathologies. So raw stuff. foods, on one hand, would be a good source of easy water, presumably. Well, I and yeah, heavily processed foods, probably not. Probably not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I I think that's probably true. Although I again, I you know. I've not studied it, so sure, I, yeah. it's just a, a speculation. Um, but I think most foods, most fresh foods, w would contain net negative charge because mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. plants are, you know, or animal cells filled with easy water. Sure, uh, sure. Negative yeah. charge. So, in fact, uh, here is a uh, here is a speculation. Uh, I don't know about you or your particular experience, but for a lot of people, you know, if you're feeling really tired, mm -hmm. uh, and and let's say you take in some sugar, how long does it take before you you feel a little bit of energy again? Um, pretty quick, yeah. Yeah, pretty quick, right? The digestive system would take at least thirty minutes for all that to go through, be digested, and get right. in. But you feel it in a few minutes. Mm, um, true. Most people, yeah. you know, five minutes is enough to begin yeah. feeling it. So what's going on? Um, uh, uh, do you really bypass um, all of the digestive system, you know, the stomach, uh, small intestine, um, into the blood, etc., to the tissues? Um, and it's possible that it's the negative charge that we extract from the food. You know, we think the food needs to be processed. Um, Interesting. Yeah, and eventually we... Uh, uh, we get ATP, uh, but this is something beyond that, and this is not an original speculation, but it came came from none other than uh, the father of modern biochemistry, Albert St. Georgi, uh, uh, you know, Nobel laureate, uh, uh, discoverer of vitamin C and such, and, you know, Nobelist among Nobelists, and not another one of those, a really uh, uh, astounding scientist, um, and and he said the same thing. He said there's something beyond the usual digestive system because you can feel the surge of energy very soon after you start eating. 
And I think yeah. what that is is negative charge. So you're taking food with negative charge. Yeah. Um, um, and the negative charge doesn't know from, you know, it's just negative charge. It, 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 it seeks areas with less negative charge. Yeah. Uh, so let's, I mean, that, that's really an interesting perspective. But let, let's take salt, for example. Yeah. You know, I mean, some people feel very, very good right after eating salt. The sodium chloride. Maybe, just speculation again, extracting some of the electromotive energetics of the chloride, chlorine molecule or atom, uh, is what gives you the initial positive feeling, but the long run effect of... Well, but the, it's neutral, right? Yeah, the sodium so chloride, yeah. The two should, should balance one another. Um, but you know, if you have if you have salt, uh, a lot of salt, like I, I I remember bathing in the Dead Sea. You mm -hmm. can't sink in it, right? And and it has a consistency. It's almost like a gel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's slimy. You can yeah feel it that way. And I um and and I think it's easy water that's actually uh, uh, forming from from the salt. Interesting. Okay. Uh, because it, you know it has that character, and we we we've made measurements, and it's true when you have high concentrations of salt, easy water builds, and it might build around the molecule or around the cluster of molecules. It's not clear, uh, okay. but easy water builds, and so it's possible that the reason you feel good after ingesting some sodium chloride um, is it builds easy water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm glad we explored that a bit because I had a sense is that it was uh, give you a, a, an immediate benefit from the sodium chloride, but then many people focus on the negative side of the sodium component over the long term. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Yeah. yeah. So, but that's interesting how the how you can break out the two elements of it in a curious way. Well, you know, and I don't, do you have any other observations about um, um, I, your new book that's coming out or? Well, yeah, I have new books? observations. <laughs> there, I got two books and um, the, the two books were in stall mode uh, because uh, my son, who is the artist, a very talented artist and, you know, anybody who's, Look at the fourth phase of water. Can see what a mm -hmm. uh, extreme, great thing, yeah, yeah. He he's amazing and so wonderful to work with him. We we we, we never had a fight over anything. Uh -huh. No egos are involved. You know, we yeah. we would have a disagreement and we reach some some mutually satisfying solution that was mm -hmm. sometimes uh, I was closer to being right. Sometimes he was closer to being right, but. No egos at all yeah. involved, and so it, we never had a fight. Uh, in, and the illustrations in really helped uh, at least that part of my brain make the connection to what the yeah. narrative was saying. Yeah, 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 it's really helpful to have that. So my son decided that um, he, with his growing family that he needed to expand his house, and uh, um, being invested in quality and also um, saving some money, he decided to be the general contractor himself. And he thought the entire project would take one year, but it took three and a half years. And everything was in stall mode for three and a half years until he could finish all the artwork. And finally, um, he's into it again. Oh, um, good. So there are two books. Um, the first one we, we project will come out early 2024. Oh, good. And the second one should come out within a year uh, after that or less and and the two books um well first i'll tell you what they're about since sure. you asked the first one um I, let me let me tell you the name if i can remember it, what we mm -hmm. we chose is called charged uh -huh. uh is the main main title the um um unexpected role of electricity uh in nature mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it deals with the role of electrical charge in nature, which 
you know, I you can surmise that my feeling is the same as your feeling. It's yes. profound. Yes. It's extremely yeah. profound. And it deals with a, a range of subjects, um, uh, rain, ranging from weather. I got four chapters on weather. The chapters begin from first principles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's nothing that exists now that I could ever find that explains weather from first principles, mm -hmm. from what I mean, the fundamental principles of physics and chemistry and building right. up from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where yeah, it needs to yeah, build, but yeah. there's nothing like that. I mean, you know, what's evaporation all about? Well, we have some evidence, uh, uh, and, and, and the atmospheric scientists don't understand evaporation. Um, I was told by an atmospheric scientist, <laughs> and they don't understand cloud formation either. Yeah. And maybe it's largely to date driven by data saying this is what's happened in the past when these events have occurred and this is predictive of what would happen. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Exactly. But that's different from understanding. Yeah. Yeah. If you understand <laughs> yeah. first principles, you'll understand how it all works. Absolutely. I and mean, you know, if you wanna if you wanna really understand climate change, you need to understand how weather works. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, do let us know because uh, I want to pre-order that on Amazon if it comes out. Well, it will come Amazon. out, you know, unless something uh, untoward happens. Uh, well, let yeah, us know, and be. we'll, we'll pre-order that in volume. Uh, <laughs> in volume, that would be fantastic. Uh, but you might not agree with everything I say in the book. Uh, that's okay. Uh, well, uh, okay, so I deal with gravitation, uh, mm. you know, so... Uh, if I were to ask you, um, what's the basis for gravitation? And if, if you weren't into the curvature of space time, which not too many people really understand, you'd say, well, masses attract one another, mm, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, your mass is attracted to the earth and therefore you're sitting where you're sitting. And yeah, you're yeah. down. But if I were to ask you, why do masses attract? <laughs> yeah, you're not the first principles yet. Uh, with that yeah you're you know that's the way it is what is yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and you know that's not satisfying and and so i i deal with that issue and suggest a, um, a revision of that which i think fits uh with much more evidence uh, oh that won't be controversial at all oh yeah Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> so uh, it, it's like I, I can expect an army of attackers from <laughs> yeah. each one of the areas. <laughs> well, I won't give out your address. Just so oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, that's that's very very helpful. I also deal with how birds fly. Oh, mm -hmm. um, and you know, and I deal with how. Are you a sailor? Yes, um, I do sail. Uh, yeah, how yeah. close to the wind do you get? Well, I I, I think I. I've achieved 30 degrees sometimes. Well, you time. know that ice boats can achieve six degrees yeah. off the wind? I've heard that. And yeah. that just blows my mind. How in the world could that possibly be? That's the question I raise. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I have an answer. And, um, oh, I'm gonna okay. I'm in suspense. Well, you have to read the book to see. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and a, a host of other topics like what turns the earth every 24 hours. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we could say, well, it just does, <laughs> it just happens, yeah, it yeah. doesn't satisfy. Okay, so that that book is uh, going to be controversial, but yeah. you know, obviously, it, if I didn't think that the ideas would lead, uh, would be meaningful, maybe even right, and mm -hmm. close to being right, I wouldn't have written the book. Yeah, but that book will be not as controversial as the next book. Next book deals with the structure of the atom. And oh my goodness. I'm suggesting that, that what we have learned in middle school is wrong. Um, and you know, your your immediate reaction is, well, boy, I mean, this, this guy's gone too far. Um, you know, um, this is, this is the structure of the atom. But, you know, if you, if you, if you realize that nobody's ever seen an atom. Right, right. <laughs> you know, so the idea that it, it resembles the solar system, you know, could be right, but it also could be wrong. Now, um, uh, think of a, a couple of middle school concepts. I like middle school. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. uh, so, 
So the nucleus is filled with, with neutrons and protons. Neutrons are neutral, protons are positive. Yeah. Right. But they're all clumped in together. They're all clumped right. in together. Yeah. yeah. Well, they repel each other. Yeah, they should. Yeah. So how come the nucleus doesn't explode? Yeah. Well, the physicists have recognized this anomaly. Um, assuming that the model must be correct, they've invented something called the strong force, mm -hmm. which is a kind of glue that has properties such that it holds it all together but doesn't impact anything else. No. Okay, it's called the strong force. And, um, you know, and it, if you were to assign a middle school student to come up with the structure of the atom and they came up with the structure, you know, that the nucleus contains all that, you, and you were the teacher, you go home, try again. Yeah. <laughs> now, if that's not, if that's not bad enough, um, I learned in middle school uh, that plus and minus attract one another. Oh, right. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. nucleus is positive. The electrons are negative. So why don't they come exactly. together? Yeah. Yeah. Why doesn't the atom collapse into nothing? Right. Now that one has never, never been seriously uh, approached. The, the closest approach is to say that, oh, well, charges don't matter down at the, at the atomic level. Quantum level, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, wait a second. <laughs> Why did they stop counting? Why did they stop? So, so Who stops counting that anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, there, there's some fundamental things that, that don't work. Um, yeah. You know, uh, uh, I, I don't want to belabor this, but then you think of two atoms coming together to form a solid, mm -hmm. right? And, and on the periodic table, almost like more than 90% of the atoms will form solids at room temperature when together. So there, there must be some proclivity for atoms to stick to one another. Right. But yeah. wait a second. Uh, uh, the, the outer shells all have electrons. Mm, right, and you course, bring the negative yeah. charges together, and you know they don't want to stick together; they want to repel. <laughs> uh, and someone came up with a solution: well, they share electrons, but I I don't see how that solves the problem. <laughs> it's a kind of yeah, yes, yes, yes. I, I, yeah. So so I won't go any further, but I you know just say that that there are some fundamental problems uh, with what we take as ground truth. I'm really looking forward to seeing <laughs> well, your next one and the one after that. Well, I'm, I, so stay at it. Happy please. to share it. Yeah, I'm excited about all this, and you know, I I keep pushing my son to uh, uh, to crank out those those illustrations quickly. But you know, it you takes time. time. You know, I, I I want to share a kindred moment, and that is when we got research data back from a clinical study. Uh, double blind placebo control, all of the data was gathered very scientifically and the report was published. And I had a group reviewing it saying, that's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had a kindred spirit. Oh yeah. Said, the data's here. Says, oh no, 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 no. This, this doesn't, this just can't happen. Yeah. Well, and, but it does. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> It's such a common reaction. Uh, it is. It yeah. is. And in my case, I took that as a challenge. And I suspect that's similar to you. It says, well, but the data doesn't fit with your perception. So that means we got something here. <laughs> <laughs> well, good chance you have something. I mean, it's a good chance you have something. Yeah. Presumably yeah. the experiments were done uh, credibly and without any, uh, uh, any, any flaws. And Twice. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Repeated. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, I think that's a problem with science these days is that we're not open to uh, uh, to new, fresh, revolutionary ideas. But a lot of young people are craving that because there's so much disinformation that we're getting from yes. all realms that, you know, they want they want to find truth. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, yeah. Young people in search of truth. And that's why, it's one of the reasons I think why my fourth phase of order book has been so... Uh, really popular mm -hmm. I, I think you know it's it's mostly simple experiments that anybody can understand and duplicate um and and logic yeah you know and logic you know can be taken apart if it's wrong very easily mm -hmm. uh 
and the experiments anybody can repeat and you know yeah. many have repeated well and, and you know i've mentioned this before jerry that uh, our lab is interested in repeating some of uh some of your studies and oh, that's exploring great. this further and uh, so we're looking forward to that and on behalf of the online community that we we, we talk to and we uh, we communicate with i want to thank you for sharing your experience and your expertise in this time together. It's, it's really inspiring to, to talk with you. I'm oh, sorry. well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that, that feedback very much.